Hello everyone, we're down here at the Clevedon Seaside yet again. Two months on from when um, this lady stood beside me in a pouring rainstorm, set off from here as part of a uh, remarkable voyage. Cal, where did you go after that? So I claimed into Clevedon and then, yeah, set off like you say in a horrendous rainstorm over to Portishead just for one night and then across um, the channel, up the Bristol Channel, under the Severn Bridge, up to Sharpness to the canal. So it was a tiny part of my big trip which was from Land's End in Cornwall to John O'Groats in the north of Scotland. Wow, and that of course is a first. It's a world first, no one's ever done it before. On a stand-up paddleboard. On a stand-up paddleboard, yeah. obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, people have run it backwards and all sorts of mad stuff, but yeah. no one's ever done it before on a stand-up paddleboard. There must have been some fantastic memories, some fantastic places. Can I put you on the spot and say which section was the best? Do you know what? It was all amazing. It, well, it wasn't all amazing, but there were some incredible bits on every little section of the trip. Um, but I think the things that stick in my mind the most are the encounters with wildlife. So, for example, in this Bristol Channel here, I had dolphins paddling with me one day. I think my favourite bit was the northeast coast of Scotland, in between Inverness and John O'Groats. And it's a section of very, very high cliffs with very few pullouts, so very few places that you can actually get out to safety. So it's quite a dangerous section, and for that reason I don't think it's very, very well paddled. There aren't many people who get the opportunity to paddle that. And I was basically paddling along 100 metre cliffs with thousands and thousands of seabirds just lining the cliffs, oh, wow. making all sorts of noise and swooping around me. You know, there'd be a pair of puffins right there and then razor bills diving in for their fish just here. It was spectacular and I feel really, really lucky to have experienced that. So you talked a little bit about the challenge of it, some of the aspects that you saw, but you, you set out with a purpose. Uh -huh. um, yeah. How did that work out? So the entire purpose of the trip was to highlight that wherever we are in the UK, we're never too far from plastic pollution um, and that there's loads of amazing stuff going on to help tackle it. Communities coming together, individuals putting themselves out there to fight it um, and everyone finding their own way that they can do something positive about it. Um, I knew I was going to see loads of plastic on the journey. I'm very used to coastal paddling, so I'm used to seeing beaches full of plastic, plastic floating in the sea. I've never done canal paddling before, mm -hmm. so I took a, um, uh, about 200 metres of canals inland from just north of here, and the plastic I found there was mind-blowing, especially around the, the busier areas, so around the towns like Gloucester, I just find chip trays floating in the canals ducklings and little families of ducks paddling past plastic water bottles. Mm -hmm. um, there was one morning in, in Wigan, in the first hour, I counted 691 plastic bottles floating in the canals. Yeah. I was paddling up the River Severn as well, which obviously is flowing directly out to sea, past countless bottle after bottle after bottle, balloons, bags, where the high tide had been, where you know there'd been flash flooding, there were bags stuck in the trees, plastic bags. And it just really highlighted for me that need for us to connect what we're using on land with what's out to sea. That's going straight into the ocean and we need to just really um, conscientiously stop it at source. Yeah. There's been an awful lot of um, really positive um, action taking place on beaches right now and awareness raising, but, but I guess what you're saying is we need to improve that in, in waterway systems in land. Definitely, I think a lot of the coastal communities I went to were very aware of this problem, really proud of what they're doing to help protect the beaches. They obviously love this environment, it's a big part of their lives, um, and that connection is driving them to do whatever they can to protect it by stopping using single use plastic, by running beach cleans. But I think that awareness hasn't quite reached the inland places, or perhaps there isn't that connection between actually what we're doing inland affects the oceans, and the health of the oceans affects us mm -hmm. you know it's not just about surfing or paddling the oceans produce over half the oxygen we breathe on land so a healthy ocean ecosystem is, is vital for us to thrive on land and also for the seals and the dolphins and all the seabirds out there who don't deserve for their lives to be affected as they are by our obsession with single-use plastic 